Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Dog Vlo uh, Dirty Laundry. Um, sorry about that, I've been watching a lot of Drew Lynch lately. You should check him out, he's awesome. It's a channel all about him and his girlfriend Stella. Um, so I am doing an episode today on self-help. And the reason for that is because with my anxiety, um, and I've said this in a, a maybe all my videos I'm not sure exactly my memory is terrible which is another thing that's perfectly normal for people who suffer from mental illness um, I'm anxious all the time I may not be in a heightened state of anxiety like a, an anxiety attack or a panic attack but I am anxious all the time to varying levels and so when I say self-help it's something to help me get through everyday life and um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit um, about what I do and uh, something that you guys can do. It, and it, it's all personal because it really depends what your interests are. There's no use trying to do something that you find boring as batshit. Um, so I'm just going to get my book so I keep turning around here because um, I've written stuff down in my handy dandy diary. I love it. It's so cute. Um, so my first suggestions are hobbies. And that's, uh, in my situation, um, I can't leave the house without help most of the time. So for me, I have a lot of time during the day to feel my anxiety. So if you're the same, if you're a housewife, house husband, if you're um, taking a gap year before college, whatever the reason be that you're in, at home constantly, um, you'll find that you, you have a lot of time to, to fill. And for me, um, I do sometimes have times where I am so down that I can't really bring myself to do stuff. And that's when you really, really need to kind of drag yourself out and pick just something. It can be tiny. It can be as little as making yourself a really nice lunch. Um, and I say that because um, with my anxiety, I forget to eat. I know I don't look it. Don't worry, I'm not delusional. I don't think I'm skinny as fuck. But I do forget to eat. And sometimes I'll I'll go like a week or two without have having without having lunches. And so, even if it's just something as simple as making sure you do have lunch, giving yourself time to prepare something really nice, um, or drawing a picture, sending an email to somebody, those tiny little things, things that you don't usually think about. You know, a lot of the time, when I was even writing down this episode, I was thinking, should I read some self-help books? to get idea self self help I realize I just said that oddly um, but then I kind of realized that that's not what I want to do I don't, I don't want to do a self-help video that's just something out of a book I just want it to be a bit raw I want it to be coming from me and not some doctor because while some doctors may well suffer from mental illnesses and the like um, I have personally found, and I have seen a lot of doctors, a lot of counsellors, a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists, and I can say without a doubt that one of them has come an iota close to doing anything to help me, and the rest have just been rubbish. It's almost as though they don't actually know what they're talking about, and that's frankly fucking terrifying for someone with a mental illness and a disorder that needs to find out information about those things. Um, because, and when I say they don't seem to know anything, they're, they're talking about the mental illness and the disorder in a way that, for me, isn't true. It doesn't apply. Nothing they've said applies. So I've had to come up with my own ways of self-help. Um, you know, you might go to a doctor and they'll say, okay, let's do cognitive behavioral therapy. And they have a very specific way of doing that with you. <clears throat> and 
it just didn't work for me. It never worked for me. It just, I could never stick to it. And I found it very difficult to comprehend some of it. And I can't explain what I didn't comprehend from it because I, I just, I, I don't know what I didn't know, if that makes sense. Um, I'm sure anyone who ever's done year 12 math will know what I'm talking about. Um, and so I have a few things down here that I have done in the past and will do in the future um, just to fill my day out with things that are fun, non-stressing and um, non-strenuous because the last thing you want to do when your brain is suffering is to then get your body overly worked up. So. I'm not saying don't exercise, in fact I am saying exercise, but I'm not saying go to the gym and run five kilometres or go outside and lift weights and walk and do all that thing. Like, if you have stairs in your house or if you have enough money to invest in a little plastic step, do some steps for 10 minutes because that gentle exercise is enough to get your body to just calm down and it's really nice it's actually a really good feeling not being sweaty and disgusting um, which if you're in Australia at this time of the year you will be um, so I guess get it over and done with hey <laughs> so that kind of gentle exercise another really good way um, of doing gentle exercise is push-ups but if you have stairs or if you can put a chair like a dinner chair against a wall that's quite stable um you can do push-ups on that chair so your hands on the chair or your hands on the top of the stairs and then feet obviously behind you and doing push-ups that way because it's actually quite easy to do them that way and you're not exhausting yourself um now of course if you're finding you're not too anxious you can take the exercise as hard as you want it's more for me um i can't do it it's too much <clears throat> so exercise and that that goes for things like um, yoga which is exercise of course something slow and gentle and then meditation and sometimes yoga and meditation can go hand in hand and the same thing goes for Pilates that sometimes you'll find you do meditation at the end of a, a class or something um, you can buy like DVDs and things like that that you can you know whack on your TV and um, just go through with the instructor on them. You might even be able to find apps these days with um, instructions and whatnot. Um, and then I guess the next thing is because in my situation I do have so much time to say, you know, 10 minutes of exercise isn't going to really fill my time up. Um, the thing is, it's really good to have a hobby. <clears throat> and with me, sometimes I go through uh, bouts of depression where. I find it very hard to enjoy anything, which means it's really hard for me to think of anything to do, um, even though I have quite a plethora of interests. Um, now, one of my interests is dolls, which is apparent with my past videos and future videos. Um, I like collecting them and I like, for lack of a better word, playing with them. It's really more just dressing, taking pictures and doing videos. Um, and those are like real looking dolls. What is the word? I'm forgetting it. Reborn. It's in my channel name. I should know. Uh, reborn dolls. That look like babies. I paint them as well. Um, and I have another type of doll I like. It's not a ball jointed doll. It's like a type of ball jointed doll but it's not made of resin and it's not got strings it's a Dolphy dream this is Julia and I love her to bits there are probably a lot of people who know what these are although they might not be I don't know um, but I like her she's you know she's poseable she's not overly fragile so I can do all sorts of things with her I can take pictures I can I can take pictures and I can pose her, take nice photographs, things like that. And it's all just about incorporating other hobbies that I like with things that I find pretty. And you know, I, I, I find dolls pretty and I like to take pictures of them. Um, and you know, for you, that could be 
model cars, stamp collecting, I don't know, people collect rocks. It's really whatever you're into. But if you find you can't bring yourself to do any of those things, if you find you, you can't make yourself that meal that you keep missing, you can't pick yourself up and go play a computer game or collect whatever or go outside or do whatever it is you think you should be doing that it's okay just constantly remind yourself that it's all right you know you deserve to relax even if you don't feel as though you can jump on and play a game or make yourself a sandwich that you can do something as simple as watching TV and if you find you can't even watch TV it's okay just to lay in bed all day for a day or two like don't stay there forever eventually you need to get up and you need to do something about making yourself feel better but it's okay to have days where you just don't and that's what you need to really remind yourself is to not let societal standards make you feel guilty about doing those things and then these are some things um, I guess to help you with that and these next three words are probably going to feature throughout a few of my different videos in the next coming weeks and that is what why and how and so what we need to do when we're feeling this way and we can't get back up out of bed or we can't pick ourselves up off the lounge and do anything but watch tv is um <clears throat> is what is wrong what is making me feel this way and so once we identify that we can then say well why is that making me feel that way and then it's really as simple as how can you overcome that so I'll do an example um, this past week I have been very depressed because my partner's gone back to work and for me change is really disturbing like I don't mean like I'm a little bit unsettled and it takes me a day or so I mean like it can take weeks for me to get back into a routine and so the the what obviously is my routine has been interrupted and Robert isn't here and so the why am I reacting that way it's quite simply it's a, and this is something to remember is I don't know and that's okay not to know it's all right not to know and that is an actual thing if you want to write these down if you're writing this down to help yourself out you can write your why as I don't know because even if you don't know it's still a response it's still an active thought that you're going through and your brain is still moving and that's what you need to do is to keep your brain moving that sounds really bad don't start shaking your head really vigorously don't do that um, and then it's quite simple as how can you calm yourself down how can you make yourself feel better because even though you might not know why you have the what and I'm sorry that I keep looking down but because of my memory issues I need to keep referring to my book um, so you have the what so in my case I knew that it was because my routine was interrupted and Robert wasn't there to comfort me because he's I guess Robert's kind of like a security blanket for me he doesn't necessarily have to do anything but as long as he's in the same room as me I find I can do stuff Robert's waving he says hello and then even if I'm not sure why I feel that way um, although logically I know it's because I'm on the autism spectrum and I don't like the way um, things change in general it's just a it's just the way I am um, and that's perfectly normal if you're on the autism spectrum or if you have borderline personality disorder or if you have any other disorder it's just the way you are don't let anyone think that you need to get better because you don't you're fine you just need to be treated a little differently people just need to be accommodating um, at least then I can figure out how to make myself feel better and for me what I've been doing this week in order to reacclimatize to being at home by myself is I've been making sure to take care of others first so what I've been doing is I've been making sure I get up 
I make sure I vacuum first. I make sure I look after the babies in the house, um, my fur babies. And then I make sure that I actually get myself some breakfast. And that has been something that's helped me a lot. And while after that, I've still been a bit stuck on what to do. Like sometimes the first few days of last week, I was stuck just watching TV. And I, I felt too anxious to get up off the lounge and, and do much else. But, you know, the, the few days after that I did, I forced myself to go up and, and do other things. And by Friday, I had actually ended up back on my computer and I was playing on Second Life and talking to, to my online friends. Although I don't like on, the term online friends. They're friends, whether they're online or not. Um, so, you know, I, I did that. And that worked for me. And I was happy with my progress with that. Um, and to close off this video, um, just remember that you're responsible for yourself. And I mean that in the kindest way possible. I'm not trying to put anyone down or anything like that. But... You need to make sure that you are okay before you start pandering to other people's needs. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a caregiver, whether you're the head of a project somewhere, even if you just take five minutes to do a really quick meditation or whether you just take 10 seconds and take 10 deep breaths, take a little bit of time for yourself every day even if you feel like you don't have the time. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.